What Is It Wednesday, presented by the Danbury Library. Each time we meet, we'll look at an interesting find from nature and see if we can guess what it is. This week, we're looking at this shell right here. Can you see it? Now, it's not very big, but the creature that lived inside packed a punch. And as we can see, it comes to a nice little point on both ends. Kind of like a cone, right? Yeah. And it has this wonderful little spiral on the front. And this interesting pattern of tans and whites. So, what we're looking at this week is this interesting seashell here. And as we see, it's not very big, but the animal that lived inside had a very powerful punch to it. And as we can see, it comes to a point on both sides. You know what it is? Well, if you'd like to guess for yourself, you can pause the video here and take a look around and come back and watch later. But if you want to know the answer right now, you can keep watching because I'm going to tell you in three, two, one. So do you know what kind of shell this is? Well, it's fun to hold seashells to our ears so that we can hear the ocean. If we ever see anything with these kind of pointed shells on the bottom of the ocean, and there might still be a creature living inside, we need to leave it alone. And the reason is because this is a cone snail shell. There are over 900 known species of cone snails, all with their own unique shell patterns and slightly different shell shapes. The species makes up the family Conidae, and while their shells are beautiful, these sea mollusks are best avoided. You see, cone snails are very aggressive predatory animals. I know, we don't really think of snails as aggressive or predatory. But these guys here are not like their land cousins. These types of snails hunt down their prey, jabbing it with a special harpoon-like tooth. In most mollusks, this tooth acts like a tongue, helping them to feed. But the cone snail has a little something extra a potent venom called a neurotoxin. This toxin can immediately paralyze and kill the cone snail's regular prey. Now while us humans aren't on the menu for these little guys, we can still be stung if we pick them up when they're alive inside their shells because they feel threatened, so they're automatically going to send out that harpoon-like stinger and inject some venom into us. And for little guys like this one here, well, that's going to be kind of similar to a bee sting. It's going to hurt, but for most of us, it's really not going to have much effect. Venom from the larger, more venomous cone snails, like the geographic cone snail, the tulip cone snail, and the striated cone snail, have been known to kill people if immediate medical attention isn't given. Unfortunately, the beautiful patterns of their shells makes divers want to pick these little guys up. So if we're ever diving in warm waters and we see a shell that kind of is the shape, a cone-like shape, even if it's very pretty, we need to leave it alone because these creatures don't like to be picked up. Cone snails live in the same shell for the whole of their lives. And as they grow, they grow the shell along with them. So every time they get a little bigger, they add another whorl to the shell, making the shell itself a little bigger too, so they can live inside. They're all nice and snug. Cone snails can be anywhere between half an inch to up to nine inches in size. Cone snails sense their prey using a part of their body called a siphon. It's very sensitive to vibrations and is much more reliable for them than the eye stalks that land snails have. Earlier we learned that cone snails hunt for their food. This means they're predators and they eat meat. Their diet can range from sea worms to mollusks to even fish. But how do they catch their prey? After all, snails aren't really known for being fast. Some cone snails attract their prey by using a hook and line method, kind of like we do when we go fishing. They wiggle a part of their body called the proboscis about which attracts the prey's attention. I'm like, Ooh, look at that thing moving around there. That might be a worm. So they come a little closer to check it out. And when they get close enough, the snail shoots out that special venom-filled harpoon tooth from the proboscis and catches that creature. 
This paralyzes the creature they want to eat, allowing that slow-moving snail to take its time getting to the food and then eating it. The other method also involves that harpoon-like tooth, but instead of shooting it out of their proboscis, the snail shoots it out of their own mouth. Whoa, that's wild, right? But it gets even wilder. You see, once the harpoon has been used, it's discarded. So they don't have to worry about retrieving that harpoon. And if they accidentally eat it when they're eating the rest of the animal, they hoff it back up. They're not concerned about reusing that harpoon because cone snails at any time have up to 20 of those harpoon tooths in their bodies that are in various forms of development. So if one gets used, there's another one waiting and ready to go. Cone snails like warm tropical waters. The largest variety hang out in the western Indo-Pacific region of the ocean. Now some species can be found in cooler waters, like those off the Cape Coast of South Africa, the Mediterranean, and off the southern coast of California. Cone snails like to live in coral reefs, tucked away between rocks and buried in the sand. Because even though these guys have that amazing harpoon-like tooth with that venom in them, they really just want to be left alone. Thank you for joining me this week on What Is It Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the very strange little cone snail. I'll see you again next week when we look at another interesting find from nature and see if we can guess what it is. Until then, happy exploring and stay curious. Bye everyone!